Hello and welcome, Desert Mountain members, to another edition of the Desert Mountain Podcast. My name is Michael Craven. I am here with uh, Full Table today. Kim Atkinson. Hello, Kim. Hello, Michael. Patrick McKenzie. Hi, Patrick. Hello, Michael. Hi, Kim. And our esteemed guest today, the one and only Todd Bone. Hello, Todd. Hey, Todd. How are you doing today? <laughs> there it is. There we are. That's, that's a new feature since we last had the uh, podcast with you, I think. You know that? You're right. Yeah. I don't remember hearing that. So uh, I thought that was extra special, but are you doing it with everybody else? Maybe here and there. No. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. Not All right. No. Yeah. All right. Last time we saw you, Todd, we, you had us out at Outlaw. Mm-hmm. And today, thank you for bringing us out to another uh, section of your playground here, the 18th uh, Fairway and Green of Chiricahua. Beautiful. Yes. Uh, when Kim asked me to do this again, she wanted to be boring and have it inside. And I said, you cannot come yeah. talk to me <laughs> and put me inside because that's not where my office is. <laughs> Even though that is my office, that's not my office. This is my office. That is so good. One of them. One of, one of the seven. One of the seven. One well, of the seven. We love being in your office, so thank you for inviting us out today and for spending time with us. And speaking of rounds of applause, you've had uh, quite a few member interactions these last couple of weeks hosting, I don't know, how many meetings have you had? Five. Five member <laughs> meetings. So so we, we know that you've done the golf group leaders, you did a coffee talk this week, and so maybe if you hadn't been to one of those meetings or you haven't had the chance to review the deck of the meeting that's on the member website, we thought we'd just kind of wrap it all up and give them a chance to listen and be interviewed today with Todd Bone. Well, that sounds great. No, I've enjoyed my time uh, with the membership and as always getting that feedback and getting face to face with them and um, hearing their concerns and their positive feedback and, and, and concerns of things that we need to get better in and that's valuable information to myself and my team, and it was especially cool last night at the coffee talk meeting um, that uh, my team was able to to, to be there and to uh, see the, the membership themselves and to get recognized, which I was really grateful for. I thought that was great, and you did start your presentation with your first priority, which is you had to start with a, with a team and really go through each and every department within your department, um, and so that was great to, to meet everybody and see everybody and give them that opportunity to meet the members. Absolutely, and like I said in there, I'm only as good as my team, and I got a really good team now, so That's very, awesome. very happy to have them all. That is so good. So let's go back to the clock a little bit. How many months have you been here? Not a year yet. Not a year yet. No. Nope. Just a shade short of eight months. Okay. Wow. Well, um, I think... Um, <laughs> What we wanted to do today is uh, for the guys, too, from Coffee Talk last night, we had a chance to kind of, you know, take some of the best questions that have come and emerged out of these sessions that you've had in case you haven't had the chance to attend um, and just kind of go through it. So um, one that came up that probably needs some explanation, if you could just help maybe even some of the newer members, is the 3-3 grassing plan. You talk about it a lot. No other real golf community or club has a 3-3 golf uh, grassing plan because they don't have six courses, Jack Nicholas courses, that, that uh, they get to manage like we do. And what is, what is that about, and how does that benefit us? So the 3-3 grassing plan is basically the difference between cool season and warm season grass. And obviously those grasses grow at different points of the year at their prime. And what I mean by that is – Cool season grass thrives in one part of the year. Warm season grass thrives in another part of the year. So as our previous podcast, when I spoke, I spoke about um, our elevation up here at Desert Mountain and how we have a lot of flexibility that a lot of people in the valley don't have um, by our elevation being where we are at, you know, 4,000 feet, depending on where you are. So that allows us to have cool season turf up here uh, more regularly than a lot of other clubs down in the valley, which gives us an advantage over over some clubs coming in to give our membership days of golf to play. So we like to think that we have conditions for turf conditions or golf course conditions and prime condition all year round with our 3-3 plan. And so, you know, you got Cochise, Outlaw, uh, 
Gosh, I, I, I forget them even. Cochise Outlaw Geronimo that are Bermuda grass base, which are warm season based golf courses, which are the golf courses that are open in the summertime and that thrive in the summer conditions. And then we have Apache, Chiricahua, and Renegade, which are our cool season turf courses, along with Seven. Seven's a cool season turf course now. That gives us the opportunity to be really good in the fall and then have really good golf while we're overseeding the Bermuda grass courses uh, with ryegrass to make them playable in the fall. And then um, and be able to have that flexibility and to provide our members golf when a lot of clubs in down Pima Valley – are closed in October because they're overseeding and doing things. We're open. We have people here playing. It's so. such a nice advantage. And from the from a marketing perspective, when we get to talk about all the unique aspects of what it means to be a desert mountain, it is it is, you know, a nice thing to be able to tout. So we're very blessed and that we've taken full advantage of having seven courses that we can alternate and have something open all year round for our members. Yeah. I mean it I can't state it anymore that, um, you know, when I go to industry things, obviously I'm new, but a lot of people talk about what we do and what we're able to do out here. And uh, there's a little bit of jealousy, I think, in some of their eyes uh, with just being able to be open and, and to have it. And um, our members uh, have a competitive advantage to be a member here for that. Fantastic. And so um, you've probably heard this too out in the industry. Golf is still just on the rise amid the pandemic and um, becoming so much more popular than ever and so much more play than ever. Um, how are you and your team learning to kind of adjust to that much play on the courses and what happens with your maintenance plan to kind of help accommodate all of this increased play? Well, it's interesting you bring that up as we were walking to get ready to come down here. I uh, saw one of the pro shop staff and they were telling me like, our golf numbers are just, I've never seen anything like it before, and that's fantastic that people are getting out here. Obviously, with that comes um, some wear and tear on the courses and some things that our teams have to um, mitigate and do, and thus, that's why I'm doing a lot of the airification practices that people see where we're poking holes and, and uh, breaking up that compaction. We're doing some extra fertilizer right now, applications in some places, um, you know, which fertilizer right now is a hot commodity because the prices are, are you know going crazy and because of all the uh the the usability you know the availability with everything going on but um we're fortunate enough to have the means to do it and uh, be able to do it and keep our golf courses in the conditions that that we are and and to strive for and so just all of that is part of all of that 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 with the traffic and the amount of play and then you know come that comes with ball marks on greens divots and fairways um, you know, and in members utilizing our inner and exit stakes for us, uh, you know, and so the members have a big part in that too, and can be a very important part of helping our team do that. And, um, you know, I'm going to get with John coming up here and we're going to work on some things, John Lieberger, uh, of what we maybe can do with the membership to, uh, start really promoting that, you know, members to help us maintain as they're playing and and to help us repair ball marks to help us uh fix divots um you know if you like i was saying in the talks if you take a divot out on a golf course and it holds together i don't care if you're on renegade geronimo apache Cherikawa, wherever you are i'd like you to pick that divot up and put it back in the hole where you hit it from tamp it down and put a little sand around it um, that'll help my team out that's the best way to do it now if the divot explodes and there's nothing left of the of the turf then i want to just fill it with sand and and that'll be that'll be good and just a reminder we've done all the all the deciphering of what sand on which golf course and that so you don't no members have to worry about that so we've got all that squared away and uh, to try to make it easy Todd, I got a question uh we did a friday jam uh i don't know a month ago or so Not too long ago uh showcasing a couple of the new toys that you guys have out there you mentioned poking holes in the turf um can you talk a little bit about that i think we hadn't talked about that the last time we we got a chance to chat sure you know in the golf industry there's it's like any any industry there's always new things coming out on the market new ways to do things new techniques uh new toys as you say that we can use (laughs) to benefit us and to help us maintain our courses at the optimal level but here at desert mountain we use a lot of that technology um 
the I've, I think I've talked about it before, but the moisture meters, you know, those are pretty common at a lot of golf courses um, that we use to test the water moisture in the greens to really direct where we need to water, where we don't need to water. So we're not overwatering and to really run our, our irrigation water. And then we have, uh, we just got, they're, they're not new to the industry necessarily, but they're new to Desert Mountain. We purchased this year uh, some side-to-side rollers, which have made a huge difference on our greens. Um, in the past, they had their roller was on like the front of a triplex, and they had which is a small machine, and it had tires, and it would roll. This machine that we have now takes the tires off the green, so it's one less wear and tear. But you also get a lot more ball roll and ball and true firmness on the greens with these rollers. And I talked about it in the golf group meetings because when we have that machine running, it's like the simplest machine that's in our shop. But when it's out there running, people like watch it and they're just like, what is that thing? <laughs> mm-hmm. And it's basically a big iron, like like you're ironing your pants. It almost looks like a like a glue stick or something, the way it, when, it, it, when it's rolling yeah. over, like a yeah. clear. Like what is it doing exactly, just to put it in layman's terms? So it's it's basically an iron. So it, it's just true in the surface up. It, it's, it's compressing the turf down a little bit, which helps firms it. And then it uh, you know makes the ball roll smoother across it. It's Not like a Zamboni for the green. Exactly. That's a, that's a good analogy, Patrick. Yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's, a, that's a pretty good analogy. Like that. So, And then we have, um, you know, new to Desert Mountain that I talked about was an overseeder. And you think, well, there's a million overseeders. And, yes, there are. But we didn't have one like this that we have with our cool season turf golf courses that I can go out and overseed right here, right now. And you can play on it, and there, you won't hardly see it. You may see wow. a couple of my lines or a couple of things in the ground, like stripes from us doing it, but you will not see it. does not tear up anything. It cuts the seed in. It's an extremely heavy piece of equipment. cuts the seed right into the ground, and we get like a 98% germination rate out of the thing. It's, wow. It is um, – that and that roller have really revolutionized what we've done here at Desert Mountain in my short time here. Yeah. Um, just, just having those two pieces of equipment – um, and then there's a lot of other things coming soon coming to us. Um, we're going to have GPS sprayer. We're going to have two of them. That GPS sprayer is going to allow us to do real direct applications with our products on, on our, a couple of our golf courses. And it'll shut nozzles off. It will not allow you to overlap. It'll get very precise. And it's a technology that's been out in the agriculture field a lot, but it's coming to us and getting it. Another thing that I'm going to be a beta site coming up for here with John Deere is we're going to have autonomous mowers out here uh, this summer. So we're probably – stay tuned on when that's exactly going to be. But uh, Desert Mountain is going to be a beta test site for autonomous fairway mowers that will be out here. So Wow. There will be a manless mower mowing at some point <laughs> on Desert Mountain wow. in this coming year. And not that we have this issue, but it won't talk back. Won't talk back. <laughs> It'll always show up at work every day, too. Not calling in sick. I love it. Oh, so man. just, uh, I mean, those are just some of the things. Wow. You know, there's there's just a lot of technology coming. You know, um, the irrigation systems we use, the, the irrigation software we use um, is getting so detailed now that I can, like, go in. And we've always been able to go in besides at Cochise because the irrigation system's out of date. And we're going to hopefully update that in 24. But... We can go in and really fine tune every head and go to put water, but this new software like will allow you to get on your phone and do it from your phone and be like anywhere in the world that you would want to do it and and do it and have it. Wow. And then the software actually communicates with our pump stations um, to where we can talk back and forth to our pump stations. Wow. Matter of fact, this week. I have an esteemed group from the UK coming to check us out because we're a beta site for that as well. Desert Mountain's always been very good at, at trying things out for these group, but I have a group from the Belfry, uh, from London uh, Country Club, I believe, and from Wentworth coming in um, to to meet us um, and to look at it because they're considering this and wanting to come see what we're doing. Leading the way, awesome! I'm excited about turf. I really am. I mean, <laughs> it is turf week after all. I mean, every week technically at Desert Mountain is turf True. week. But we, we are celebrating with all sorts of content information. We've had the meetings. Another Friday jam is in the works. Another Friday jam. The theme's um, rolling, yep. Yep. We'll have a nice little bonus feature article in the uh, Mountain Minute as well that we hope you read. Um, you know, 
we um, hadn't talked about this with our members yet, and it's it's a team effort, um, but something that kind of hits your area um, and that you your team has had to make a lot of um, uh, things available to us, and that's our our gas program mm-hmm. that we rolled out to um, to some of our employees. So. Um, Tell us a little bit about that. I mean, this thing is like the nicest, most thoughtful idea that I've heard. Uh, and the fact that we're doing it has just been awesome. It is. Um, there is no secret that Desert Mountain's location up here is a challenge to get people to want to come up here. So we have to think outside the box as a team. Kim, us as a leadership team, us as a just all of us as a team to figure out how we're going to get and good teammates we want the best of the best to come up here to join us to be a part of this great club and so this is just a continued thing upon the many things that desert mountain already does with the unbelievable benefits the health care clinic on site all of that stuff that's already out there um to where we can give back right now during this time um to some of our teammates that um really travel a long way and and, and to come to work and i i I'm really proud to be a part of it, and you know the the fuel comes out of our our uh, our area, so I get to see or my team sees a lot of the people coming in there, and just the the amount of happiness and um, gr- gr- uh, graciousness of the teammates that are doing it and and getting to be a part of it, I think says all you need to know about that we're doing the right thing and. Um, so grateful to the membership for supporting that and, and allowing us to do that. So one week out of the month, essentially what's happening is we are filling up a tank of da- a gas for our employees. And it's just a remarkable opportunity and a, a wonderful give back. So we're super grateful that you've been able to help us do that for our teams and, and for, for everybody's sake. It's been been awesome. Yeah, no, we like I said, it, it's fun to see everybody come down there and and to help people out that's what it's all about um right now and it's not fun going to the gas pump right now no it um, isn't we all know and, and seeing that that leads a big dent in your in your in your in your pocket right now so to but be think, able to help that and just another little added benefit to give us a leg up you know we talk about that desert mountain's got the leg up on a lot of things <laughs> so um we'll, we'll we'll see what happens all right so um summertime is right around the corner hard to believe and i know you've got some projects up your sleeve of course we've talked a little bit and have uh, damon sent out a, a nice video uh, last week on what's happening with renegade what are some other summer projects that you're excited about so on on top obviously renegade in the renegade range area and then we'll have the short game area soon to follow after that as we get um a, some of the clubhouse uh construction down there at renegade further along get some things out that's going to be a really really cool area i'm super excited for that just how it's coming together and they're pl- and looking at it i know i have a lot of background in construction on golf courses but i can go down there and see what it's going to look like some people will get down there and think it's just a big pile of dirt right now <laughs> but but it trust me it's going to be really really nice but another th- another item i'm excited about is the apache driving range tee that we're going to modify the south end um the south end of the range tee if you're familiar with that T, there's three decks back there. The very forward T deck we can't even use because that driving range is only 303 yards. And with the equipment and ball and people hitting it further, obviously you'd be in peril of getting hit if you're up there in front. So we really only use the back two decks now. Well, those back two, there's a lot of wasted space between those two T's. And so, you know, we're trying to figure out ways to get more availability for our members on the mountain um, to have more areas for them to go. And I think um, if you're familiar with that back tee, that back, very back tee, you walk up a steep hill to get up on top of it from the cart path. And it's kind of a dangerous hill. If it's wet, you could slip and whatever. Well, we have the flexibility up there because of the elevation of that tee that we can lower that tee down to the cart path level, which is going to make it easier to walk on to, accessibility for everybody. And then we're going to push all of that dirt basically over that second deck and fill that all in and make it one big level T up there. So it'll be just like uh, Cochise Geronimo driving range T. We'll sod it with Bermuda grass. We'll overseed it every year so that it'll wear and tear a little bit. Having just rye grass, plain rye grass on a driving range T with no Bermuda base under it, 
it tends to get beat up a lot quicker than uh, a driving range tee with the Bermuda base. It's a little more recoverability. So that's our goal, um, and I'm excited for that. I think that's going to be a, a, a big win, and we'll start that 1st of August and then have it completed and open that tee up uh, when we open uh, Apache back up in September, like September 26th, I believe, somewhere in there. Great. Well, we'll be putting together some follow-up communication in the weeks ahead on some summer plans and schedules and whatnot. And in the meantime, look out for a pretty fun Friday jam in the works. <laughs> yeah, you got any, uh, any um, you know, uh, advice for us as we go out tomorrow morning? I know we're going to go out. We're going to spend some time out on the courses with your with your, your guys and gals, your staff out there. Uh, it looks beautiful. I mean, if you're watching on Definitely. YouTube, yeah. it, it looks great. I love the way it's mowed out here today on Cherry. But you got any advice for us, Todd? Hold on and hang tight because they move fast and uh, it's fast and furious out there in the mornings getting golf courses uh, prepped and ready in front of golf play and to stay in front of our golfers and try to get as much done and um, a lot of activity going on, especially this time of year because everything's really starting to grow. I mean, there's no secret. I don't know about you guys, but my allergies have been going crazy. (laughs) That's usually when it's a grass grower delight, when my allergies start going crazy, um, because that means everything starts to grow. It's a happy cry. It's a happy cry. Yeah, if you see me in tears, I'm not sad. It's just allergies. Um, But everything's blooming. You know, uh, this is really my, this is my first, uh, I guess, spring in the desert. Yeah, what do you think? Um, It's it's, it's beautiful. Like, there's a lot lot more color out here than I uh, saw in July, and I was like, man. I hadn't seen that before or anything, so it's been good, but but everything's really starting to grow, and um, a lot of our young turf and some of these areas that are inconsistent um, and doing some things are really going to start catching up, and I talked about that in our talks, but just a lot of that, I'm excited for that uh, this summer, too, just growing grass again. It's It was hard to um, for me to wrap my head around as a turf guy. Um, or the bulk of your play is during a month when your grass kind of slows down. Mm-hmm. And so um, I'm going to be better prepared for that next year, I think. But just understanding that, that, you know, you get a lot of our bulk of our play in the time when the turf is a slow growing. And so we have to learn to manage that, to build up to that. But then now, like coming out into this time, we're still busy and we're still going to rock. And we got all of our tournaments coming up, our member guests, our member members, um, all of that stuff right now, but everything's really starting to grow and come up. And um, so I, I'm kind of a turf nerd, but but I, but but with that, I, it's I the right I man love, for the job. I love uh, <laughs> I love that part of it. It's like the happy time. This is the the great time where we can all enjoy the hard work that went into this. And yeah. yeah. All right, so we have a lot of information that we've been sharing the last couple of weeks, and this being kind of our turf week with. With our jam and our podcast and articles coming out, uh, be sure to look at that deck. Um, I would I would strongly advise if if uh, you need a deeper dive into the information, uh, flip through that presentation because Todd, you did an awesome job yesterday at the coffee Thank talk, you. going through every single course, some of the issues that we're seeing and the plans that you have to to address them, and so lots of lots of information out there. Yeah, and going forward. You know, my team, and just kind of give a glimpse into that, just a little snippet of it. Um, for 22, I know we're already into April somehow in, in this in this year. Um, but my word that I'm charging my guys with is consistency. And that's a focus of my team um, is now to take our conditions and let's get consistent. Let's, let's not have the, the ups and downs that we've had before. Um, let's keep things where we're at and keep building on it and keep, keep growing and, and, uh, excited for that. And we know we still got a long way to go as a team, uh, with our conditions. And my team knows that I'll be the first one to say that. And, um, so just excited to keep building on it, keep growing, um, keep seeing the improvements. Um, and hopefully the membership does as well and, uh, keep, keep getting after it. I have one more thing I wanted to ask. Uh, I know we had some big storms last summer that caught us off guard. Is there anything now that you've been here almost a year, is there anything that can be done to prepare for that? Or is that just kind of, because we've got to start thinking about that now, right? Is it just kind of you have to cross that bridge when we come to it? It's hard to prepare for that. The one thing I'll say is uh, Mr. DiOrio can never tell me it never rains here in the desert again. <laughs> so we've, 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 that's been well documented. I, I, give him, I give him a hard time all the time. Um but the, the second thing is, you know, 
to the point of uh, the storm and the damage is going to be one thing. Like, there's nothing. If it's going to rain six and a half inches in two hours like it yeah. did last summer, I don't care what you do. There's You're just not going to be able to survive a lot of that with the desert scape and everything. Us as a team, though, are better prepared this year with tools in our toolkit to be in front of some of the disease pressure, some of the things that caused a lot of the heartache for us last year. And um, we're committed to doing that. And, you know, I think I've mentioned it before, but we're not going to get caught, in, at least while I'm here, in like we were last summer of not being prepared. We're going to be prepared for the worst and hope for the best and uh, have it ready to go for us and um, and be ready to go. So like, I, I guess that's a lesson learned, right? Yeah, well, you wouldn't, you couldn't have known. <laughs> you didn't know what to expect right. last year, but yeah, yeah, I'm sure everybody would would love to hear that that we're we're as prepared as we can be. I mean, if you remember some of those pictures, I'd never. I grew up in Arizona. In I've never seen the raging rivers that yeah. were flowing through our golf courses last year. So that 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 was an anomaly for sure. Oof. So I give Damon credit for that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we had chunks of golf course just. We did. Broken. <laughs> Irrigation pipe, golf course yeah. chunks, fairways missing. Yeah, it was uh, it was a uh, indoctrination to my time here. <laughs> and then, you know, the other thing on my end, and something I forgot to mention just a minute ago, is just the disease. Like, the humidity out here is not a big thing. You know, that's a big thing where I came from. And that's where you get a lot of your diseases. So, like, turf diagnostics, like, people were seeing things – at other clubs here in town, you know, some of my friends down the valley and here that they never seen before. And they're like, what is this? And I'm like, I know what it is because we've seen it in the Midwest a lot of times, but everybody out here was like, no idea. Didn't really know how to kind of ebb and flow. And we had vendors that we were trying to get products from to treat with that didn't have it. That, it, you know, it was just a, it was like chaos on, uh, you know, it was, it was nuts last year. And so I think everybody learned a little bit from that. Yeah. And uh, I'm expecting this year to be very hot, very dry, very <laughs> nothing, because now that we're all prepared for it, nothing it's happen. layman's law or whatever they right. say, right? Like that, that that's how it's going to happen. But, uh, but oh, it'll yeah. be all right if that's how it happens, too. We'll be ready that way, too. Well, Knock yeah. on wood. Knock on right. wood. you got an amazing team and fantastic plans ahead of us, so we're super excited and um, plenty of information out there for everybody too to stay informed. So, thank yeah. you so much for taking time out of your busy day to spend with us. Glad to be here. Glad to do it, and uh, like to hear the feedback and anything that we can do to get better. Thank Very you, awesome. Good. Thank you, Todd. Thank you, Todd. Um, should we kick it back to the studio really quick? We let's let do we, some shots real quick. Yeah, yeah. let's recognize uh, the golfers who have been hitting great shots on on this great turf. This great turf. Yeah, let's send it back to the studio quickly. All right, members, a few great shots to mention this week, and the trend of Eagles continues. Starting with Rick Macon, March 26th, an Eagle on number 13, Outlaw. Terry Young, an Eagle on number 5, Renegade, on March 27th. Anna Ferguson, an Eagle on number 8, Apache, on March 27th. And Louise Billmeyer, a hole-in-one, the only hole-in-one reported from the past week on number 17, Apache, also on March 27th. That'll round out this week's list. We look forward to sharing more great shots next week. Stay tuned. All right. Uh, I guess that about wraps it up, Kim. Sounds like a wrap. <laughs> thanks, <laughs> thanks, thank you, everyone, for putting up. I know it's a little windy out here today, but it's the price you pay for being up here, and we'll take it. I'll take this over the, over this, the office. The there's, office. There's a yes. lot of things I can control out here. This isn't one of them. <laughs> <laughs> the wind one. and the rain and, and that I cannot. But One more quick question for Todd yes. before we wrap up. Officially. Is the K-State Wildcat going to be a Jayhawk fan this weekend? Oh, that's a good question. Oh, my. Why he put me on that? You know, <laughs> you know, that's a setup. That's a setup because we do have some KU members here that, that are members. Uh, just a question. Just a question. <laughs> but I will never cheer for the KU Jayhawks. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. You okay. heard it here. You heard it here first, folks. Yeah. There you go. All right. All right, Todd. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. I've said it before, Kim, but we I, we got the right man here. You are awesome at what you do, and we appreciate it very much. Thank you. And I know appreciate the members. you guys' help. Thank you. Thank All you, right. members. That's we'll see you around the mountain. Thank you, members. See you around the mountain. <laughs> <laughs>